we're going to start with a puzzle in this topic of polygons and quadrilaterals suppose i talk about a quadrilateral abcd and i mark out the midpoints of all the four sides of the quadrilateral and label them as pqrs then what i do is i join the midpoints of adjacent sides and when i join all the midpoints of adjacent sides together i get another quadrilateral pqrs what can we say about pqrs what kind of a quadrilateral is this we'll go through the concepts of this topic and then at the end we would come back and look at what kind of a quadrilateral gets formed in such a case let's now move on to some specific types of quadrilaterals the first one that we're going to look at is a parallelogram so let's first of all try and draw the diagram for a parallelogram and then understand what are the properties of a parallelogram so if this is a parallelogram and let's say we call this as a b c d then a parallelogram has certain specific properties so for example with respect to the sides the properties would be opposite sides are parallel which would mean ab is parallel to cd and ad is parallel to bc and also opposite sides are equal which means ab is equal to cd and ad is equal to bc so with respect to sides the properties of a parallelogram would be opposite sides are parallel and equal which we already discussed ab is parallel and equal to cd ad is parallel and equal to bc now let's look at some properties with respect to angles now since we know that opposite sides are parallel then we can definitely say that if we label these as a and b then a plus b would be equal to 180 degrees because we know when lines are parallel these are interior angles and interior angles are supplementary this can be generalized for angles as adjacent angles in a parallelogram are supplementary and there is another property for a parallelogram which is opposite angles are equal so angle dab would be equal to angle dcb and similarly angle adc is equal to angle abc so with respect to angles opposite angles are equal adjacent angles are supplementary and then let's look at some properties with respect to the diagonals in a parallelogram if i now draw these diagonals ac and bd then the property is such that diagonals bisect each other which means am would be equal to mc dm would be equal to mb so if we go through the entire thing as a recap in a parallelogram opposite sides are parallel and equal opposite angles are equal adjacent angles are supplementary diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other now in addition to this if we have some additional properties then maybe we can classify the parallelogram in terms of a rhombus or a rectangle or a square and we will now move on and see what additional property would convert it either into a rhombus or a rectangle or a square let's move on from a parallelogram to a rhombus now in a parallelogram if it is mentioned that adjacent sides are equal then automatically what happens is all sides become equal and in such a case a parallelogram gets converted into a rhombus so if we draw the diagram for a rhombus in abcd what would happen is the properties of a parallelogram get retained and hence we can very safely say a rhombus is always a parallelogram but every parallelogram may not be a rhombus when will a parallelogram be a rhombus when adjacent sides of a parallelogram are equal so opposite sides would still remain parallel all sides in a rhombus would be equal with respect to angles whatever was true for a parallelogram continues to be true for a rhombus because all the properties of a parallelogram would still be applicable for a rhombus 
which means opposite angles would be equal, adjacent angles would be supplementary. Diagonals would still bisect each other. So if we draw AC and BD, the diagonals would still bisect each other. But now we would have a few additional properties in a rhombus. Let's try and understand what are these additional properties. One of them we've already mentioned which is all sides are equal. The other additional property would be that diagonals are also perpendicular to each other. So we can combine the two properties for the diagonal and say that the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. With respect to the diagonals, we can also have one more property where we can say that diagonals are angle bisectors means diagonal AC would actually bisect angle DAB as well as angle DCB. Similarly, diagonal BD would bisect angle ADC and would also bisect angle ABC. So diagonals are angle bisectors. Finally, when we draw these two diagonals, the entire rhombus gets divided into four triangles, which would be, if we label this point as M, these four triangles would be AMB, BMC, CMD and AMD. And in a rhombus, what happens is the diagonals divide the rhombus into four congruent triangles, which means all these four triangles that we can see they are all congruent to each other. So moving beyond the properties of parallelogram, the additional properties in a rhombus would be all sides are equal, diagonals are perpendicular to each other, diagonals are angle bisectors and diagonals divide the rhombus into four congruent triangles. Let's now try and establish a link between a parallelogram and a rectangle. In a parallelogram, We've already said that adjacent angles are supplementary. But if we also know that adjacent angles are equal or if in a parallelogram you are told that any one angle is 90 degrees, then the parallelogram necessarily would become a rectangle. So if in a parallelogram it is given that one angle is 90 degrees or if in a parallelogram it is given that adjacent angles are equal then the parallelogram becomes a rectangle we can once again say that every rectangle is always a parallelogram but every parallelogram is not always a rectangle all properties of parallelogram would still be applicable for a rectangle which would mean opposite angles or i'm sorry opposite sides are parallel opposite sides are equal in this case additionally all angles are equal and they are all equal to 90 degrees. Beyond a parallelogram, an additional property for a rectangle would be that diagonals are equal and diagonals bisect each other which was true for a parallelogram would still continue. And now if we look at these four triangles that the rectangle gets divided into when we draw both the diagonals we can say that the diagonals divide the rectangle into four triangles of equal area. So just to summarize, in a rectangle, the additional properties would be that all angles are equal to 90 degrees, diagonals are equal and diagonals would divide the rectangle into four triangles of equal area. This is how we move from a parallelogram to a rectangle. Finally, let's see how a parallelogram links up to a square. In a parallelogram, if it is mentioned that adjacent sides are equal and if it is also mentioned that angles are equal, then the parallelogram actually would be a square. So let's try and understand properties for a square. If we look at this square ABCD, all properties of parallelogram are still applicable because a square is always a parallelogram. So opposite sides would still be parallel. However, now additionally we know that all the sides of a square are equal. All angles of the square would be equal to 90 degrees. Diagonals in a square 
would be equal. Diagonals would also be perpendicular to each other and as in the case of a parallelogram, diagonals bisect each other. Diagonals are also angle bisectors, something that we studied for rhombus. Diagonals divide the entire square into four triangles which are congruent. So effectively you would notice that all the properties that we have seen with respect to a parallelogram or a rhombus or a rectangle, everything would be applicable to a square. In terms of sides, all sides equal opposite sides parallel. In terms of angles, all angles equal, each angle equal to 90 degrees. In terms of diagonals, diagonals are equal. Diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. Diagonals are angle bisectors. Diagonals divide the square into four congruent triangles. In fact, what I normally tell students, if you are ever confused about a certain property being applicable in a certain type of quadrilateral, Square is the safest. Whatever you feel like applying out of all the properties that you know, you can safely apply it for a square and you would never go wrong. The quadrilaterals that we've seen till now were quadrilaterals where we had two pairs of opposite sides as parallel. Let's now look at a type where only one pair of opposite sides is parallel. And this type of a quadrilateral is called as a trapezium. So we have one pair of opposite sides being parallel and the other pair which is not parallel. So if we say this trapezium is ABCD, then we can see that AB is parallel to CD and AD is not parallel to BC. So only one pair of opposite sides is parallel. The pair which is not parallel, which is AD and BC, are called as the oblique sides in a trapezium. In a special case, if the oblique sides are equal, which means that if AD is equal to BC, then such a trapezium is actually called as an isosceles trapezium. So in an isosceles trapezium, you have one pair of opposite sides as parallel and the oblique sides as equal. And in a trapezium, the concept of median is such that if we join the midpoints of the oblique sides, what is formed is called as the median of the trapezium. So just to go through these properties of trapezium again, in a trapezium, one pair of opposite sides is parallel, the other is not parallel, in fact called as oblique. If oblique sides are equal, it's an isosceles trapezium. And median is the line joining the midpoints of the oblique sides in the trapezium. Finally, in our classification of quadrilaterals, we had mentioned that if no pair of opposite sides is parallel, then such a quadrilateral is called as a kite. So let's have a look at a kite. It is called as a kite. It may or may not be a kite, but one of the possibilities is a kite. So let's look at a kite. A kite is something like this where you have no pair of opposite sides being parallel however certain specific properties with respect to a kite would be you have two pairs of adjacent sides as equal which means that AB is equal to AD BC is equal to DC so two pairs of adjacent sides are equal the diagonals are perpendicular to each other and one diagonal bisects the other diagonal. So here we can see that AC bisects BD. That means BM is equal to MD. But BD does not bisect AC. It is possible that both the diagonals bisect each other and if that happens then this kite would get converted into what is also called as a rhombus because then you would have diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other in which case then the sides would become equal and it would become a rhombus but specifically with respect to a kite two pairs of adjacent sides are equal diagonals are perpendicular to each other and one diagonal bisects the other diagonal so these are the different types of quadrilaterals and their associated properties.
So now that we've gone through all our concepts of polygons and quadrilaterals, let's go back to our initial quiz and try and solve that question. We had started off with ABCD as a general quadrilateral. So suppose we have ABCD as a general quadrilateral and then we had marked out the midpoints of all the sides. So suppose this midpoint is P, Q, R and S. Now if we join the midpoints of adjacent sides, then we would get a quadrilateral of this type. And the question was, what can we say about this quadrilateral PQRS? Now this entire question actually is based on a theorem that we have learned earlier, which is known as midpoint theorem. So if we just join BD, which is the diagonal, and since we know R and Q are the midpoints, in triangle CDB, if R and Q are the midpoints, then line joining the midpoints of two sides is parallel to and half of the third side, which would mean RQ is parallel to BD and half of BD. Similarly, for triangle ABD, PS would be parallel to BD and half of BD, once again through midpoint theorem. And hence we would get PS is parallel to RQ and PS is equal to RQ. So in a quadrilateral, if one pair of opposite sides is parallel and equal, then such a quadrilateral would be a parallelogram. And hence we can conclude that PQRS is a parallelogram. Now let's try and take a variation to this. Suppose we also join AC and suppose the question also mentioned that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. When the diagonals intersect, they intersect at right angles. Now what can we say about this quadrilateral PQRS? So now we can say that AC would also be parallel to RS and if this angle is 90 degrees, this angle would also become 90 degrees using the concept of interior angles in parallel lines. Similarly, this angle would become 90 degrees. So we've got angle SRQ as 90 degrees in quadrilateral PQRS. If we move along, then we would get all these angles at 90 degrees. And hence, we can safely now conclude that PQRS is a rectangle. So just one variation to the question that the diagonals of ABCD intersect at right angles converts this PQRS from a parallelogram into a rectangle. Let's look at one more variation. Suppose we had started off and we had said ABCD is actually a rectangle. Then what can we say about PQRS in the same question? Now if ABCD was a rectangle, then we know that in a rectangle diagonals are equal. So if diagonals are equal, then BD would be equal to AC. Now if BD is being considered with RQ, then we already know that RQ is half of BD using midpoint theorem. RS would be half of AC using midpoint theorem. And now we know that BD and AC are equal. Hence RQ and RS would be equal. And in this manner, we would get all the four sides as equal. And then we would have said that the quadrilateral PQRS is a rhombus. So this is how actually dependent on the data given and depending on the properties from one type of quadrilateral to another, we can actually keep moving on and keep concluding what kind of a quadrilateral would PQRS be depending on the data given. So your concepts in terms of properties of quadrilaterals are going to be extremely important when we move on to solving such questions.